Hello, my name is Luke, and in this video, we're taking our first look at the Transformer architecture. If you're new to the channel, all the code you see is available in my PyTorch GitHub repo, link in the description. And this video is a part of a much larger series on deep learning in PyTorch. We're now on section 14, where we're looking at transformers. Now in the previous section, section 13, we introduced attention, what it is, how it works, how you can use it. And we saw how we could introduce it into say an LSTM or a CNN in order to improve their performance. In those videos, we talked about how well, if attention can pull information from different elements in our sequence or from spatial regions across an image, then is it really necessary to have, say, the LSTM? Well, as first introduced in the famous paper, attention is all you need, it turns out that no, you don't need a reoccurrent neural network and you can, by using attention by itself, structure a network, now called the transformer, in order to handle sequential data in a non-reoccurrent way. In this video, we're gonna look at a basic example of a transformer to classify text. Now over the next three videos, we're going to introduce a few different types of transformer architectures or different tasks. And it's not necessarily going to be in chronological order. I'm going to introduce them in a way that I think is most simple to understand. So we've already seen text classification, the idea that you take in a sentence, a sequence of tokens and provide a single label. And that sequence can be of a variable length, but we want to provide a single token classification. And now we're going to see how we can do that just with attention with our transformer model. So most of this code here, you've already seen in the text classification video. That's our LSTM text classification video. So I'm not going to talk about tokenization and embeddings and things like that because I've already discussed that. We're still using that AG news data set. That is basically a data set of short article titles and short article content. And we're trying to classify them into you know, one of four different categories. Before we actually get into the architecture today, let's just go over how we can use attention by itself in order to perform sequential processing. So let's have an example sentence such as the black cat is out by. So if we wanted to process this with our LSTM, tokenize this, of course, and then we put those tokens into our model, get our word embeddings, and you know we have that memory buffer that we're passing along. Now what we're going to do with attention is we're actually going to use self-attention. For this example, we've seen self-attention in the adding attention to a convolutional neural network video. And that is what we're going to do is going to allow each embedding from each token in our sequence to query every other token in the sequence. So our first token might be the, and that's going to produce a query, a Q, and it's also going to produce a key value pair. And every token in our sequence is also going to produce those. Cat is also going to produce a key value pair. And what we're going to allow is for every token to query every key and therefore pull the value information from that embedding into this embedding here. And we've already seen how attention works in the attention video. So you can see that by using self-attention, and if we remember in the CNN video, self-attention is where we provide the entire input as the input to our attention block and allow every element in our sequence to query every other element in the sequence. The can query black, can query cat, query is, and conversely, black can query the, cat can query the, et cetera, et cetera. So they can all query each other. Now, once we've done that querying, what we normally do is pass those embeddings through an MLP, so a multi-layer perceptron, usually with a single hidden layer. So it might look something like this. We embed our word or our token. That goes into our self-attention block, block attention. And then that can query all of the other embeddings in our sequence. And then that pulls information. So it's both directions. And then that goes into a little MLP. And then we have the output of that, which is another embedding. So our processing step here goes, we embed the token as is. We then cast attention across the entire sequence, all the embeddings of all the other tokens in our sequence. We update our embedding from that, pass that through an MLP, and we get our output. Now what this is doing is, Firstly, we're embedding our word. Now, in our case here, the, the word the, doesn't hold a lot of information. You could have uh, a lot of things that come after the, or we, we could be referring to when we say the. After this first attention block, what we're hoping is that this embedding changes to update the fact that we are referring to a black cat. So while this first embedding might contain information about the as a word, after attention, we hope that this embedding is updated to refer to the fact that we're referring to a black cat. Another example we could use, is if we were, say, paying attention now to the embedding cat at the start, this is just an embedding that refers to cats or a cat. After the attention block here, right, we do our attention on this as well. It can now see that before it, 
became the word or came the token black. So we're hoping that this embedding updates to refer to the fact that it's not just referring to a cat, it's referring to a black cat. And we're updating that again with our MLP, which is where our non-linearity of our network comes from, which as we've already discussed, is important for our neural networks to be non-linear function approximators. How do we now turn this into a classification network? What we're gonna do is we're actually going to utilize in this first example, the fact that we have those start of sentence and end of sentence tokens. So we normally have say a start of sentence token and squeeze it in here, an end of sentence token, which just, if you remember, signals to our network where the start and the end of our sequence is. These, just like every other token in our sequence, goes through our attention MLP blocks. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use start of sentence token here with our attention. Again, this is gonna be able to query every single other element in our sequence. It's gonna go through an MLP and then it's gonna produce an output embedding just the same. What we're gonna do is we're going to take this output embedding, put it into a single fully connected linear layer and then project it to our output layer. So we've got four classes for our classification. So we're gonna project that to another layer. So this is just a linear layer and to our four classes. We're gonna do our cross entropy loss classification. And the hope is that this start of sentence token, the network will identify that it's unique as the start of sentence. And with that self-attention part of the network, it's going to be able to query every other token in the sequence, update it with our MLP to work out what this sentence is about. Let's go back to our code now and have a look at our architecture to see how we've implemented what we've been discussing. So here we have our nano transformer for our first example today. And you can see in our initialization, we have our embeddings for our word embeddings that we're going to learn. We'll skip the positional embedding for now. But we have our multi-headed attention block in PyTorch and then our MLP. Then finally, that last fully connected output. You can see in our actual code example, we're putting all of the outputs from every single embedding in the sequence into the FC. And then our training loop, we're only pulling out that first one that corresponds to the start of sequence. So there we go. We have our word embedding into our multi-headed attention, MLP, and then output. But we skipped over this sinusoidal position embedding. What's that about? So you can see here, we have this position embedding. We've used this before for our diffusion models. Basically what this class is gonna do, it's no learnable parameters, it's just gonna produce a unique vector or every integer input we give it. And why we need this is because with attention, unlike something like an LSTM, we're performing querying of all the other embeddings in the sequence at the same time. And in fact, there's no inherent sequential process actually in our attention layer. What that means is that there's no way for our model to know what token actually came first. So you could take our sequence, the black cat is outside, and you could shuffle it around in any which way, pass that through our transformer network, and the output would be exactly the same as if you had it in the correct order of the sequence, because the attention and our self-attention querying has no information about the order of the tokens in our sequence. However, we know that in language, the order of the tokens is important. So we need to inject that information about order somehow into our sequence. And the way we're gonna do this is by creating a positional embedding using the sinusoidal position embedding so that every token in our sequence gets a unique vector. Right, this is fixed every time it's the first token in the sequence. That additional vector that we're gonna add on is gonna be the same one every time. So as I said, we're just going to add it on to our sequence. And that way our attention head knows that, okay, well, this vector has the embedding added on for the first token in the sequence. So this token must be the first token in the sequence. So we embed the tokens with our embedding. What we need to do is we need to construct, yeah, I'm just using torch arrange to get a sequence of integers from zero to the length of the sequence. And we're going to pass that into our positional embedding. We're now gonna get a sequence of positional embedding vectors. We're going to reshape that and expand it to our batch size because every single example in our batch is going to have the exact same sequence of positional embeddings because they're all the same length, all the same order is the input. So we got our positional embeddings added on in our multi-headed attention, output MLP, FC out. So let's have a look now at our training. Great instance of our classifier here and our optimizer, approximately 5 million parameters. Most of these are going to be in the embedding. When we're training, all we need to do is similar to our LSTM, we pass our text input sequence to our transform, convert it into our tokens. We pass that to our model here and we get the prediction. Like I said, this is gonna give an output for every single element in the sequence, but we're only gonna take the first one, which corresponds to the start of sentence token, which every sequence is gonna have. And we do our cross entropy loss calculation, back propagate and do our optimization step. And we're also going to do a test loop as well. I've already trained this. You can see we do reduce our loss and our accuracy increases over time in accuracy of about 92%. Now that we've got our model trained, let's have a look at some things we can do with it. But what I'm doing here is I'm just taking some of the tokens from our test data set here 
and I'm passing them through our classifier. And one thing I skipped on before was that our model also produces the attention map from our multi-headed attention block as well as the predictions on the output. And what I want to see here is, can we see which tokens in our input sequence for a given sequence are corresponding to our model's decision on what class or what category of news article the input sequence is a part of. We're taking a whole batch of inputs, putting them from our model and getting the attention map here. Once we've got that attention map, we're just going to take one of the elements in the batch. So one sequence from our batch, and we're going to pull out the attention map for that one. And we want the attention map for the first token in our sequence. Again, that's the start of sentence token. And that is gonna be the attention map we're looking at. We'll also get the prediction from our model for that input sequence. And we're just going to find which of the four classes that corresponds to. We're going to take that attention map we extracted, sort it in descending order. So from largest to smallest, and we'll take the top five. So the five largest softmax scores from the attention map. And we will then look at what tokens those correspond to. So if we look at our article, that's our input sequence here. It was predicted as a world article, and that's the true article. And we can look at which tokens contribute to that classification. That was terrorism, making, agenda, Elizabeth, and queen. And we can look at the attention scores plotted out here. What I want to show you in this next sequence here is we're just going to run a quick test on our model. And we can see we got a 92% accuracy. But I just wanted to show you what happens if I were to change the batch size to a batch of one and run our test again. And you can see we get a different accuracy. In fact, this accuracy is a little bit higher. Now, it's great that it's higher, but the question is why would the accuracy change if I change how many sequences we're processing at a time? Now, the reason why we get a different accuracy is because of the way that we're pre-processing the tokens. So if we look at our token here, what you'll notice is we have our start of sentence token, end of sentence token, but no padding. If I to change the batch to batch size, for example, and look at our tokens now, we look at one of the elements in our sequence. You can see now that we have a lot of padding in our input sequence because of this, our model can somewhat expect to see adding in our input sequence, especially for sequences that are shorter than average. Because our network can query every element in the input, it can also query all of these non-information providing tokens that are just padding tokens. So these will get embedded, they'll go through the multi-headed attention, be able to query everything, everything will be able to query these padding tokens. And so the model can expect to see padding in the input. And so if we wanted to only query our model with one input at a time, we could get a different result it could result in better accuracy, it could result in actually worse accuracy a lot of the time. So how do we handle this? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change slightly what we do with our input sequence and what we provide our multi-headed attention. I've got a copy of our text classification here. And the only thing I've changed is I've created this variable called key padding mask. And this is a bool mask, so true and false. So it'll be true where the input sequence, those integers is equal to zero. So we'll have trues, where the input sequence has a padding token as the input. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually provide this to our multi-headed attention. So the input keypad masks, the padding mask, we're going to provide that as an input. And if we go to our documentation for our multi-headed attention, you can see in our forward pass that this is an optional input. If specified for a binary mask, a true value indicates that the corresponding key value will be ignored for the purposes of attention. Essentially what this means is that for elements in that input key padding mask, if there is a true there for that corresponding input embedding, then none of the other embeddings in the sequence will be able to query that embedding. The key will basically be zeroed or the result of the attention will basically be zeroed and ignored for the purposes of attention. So by providing this input into our multi-headed attention, what we're basically getting our model to do is ignore any input that is the pad token. That way, if we have a batch of sequences where some of the input sequences have padding, or if we just have the single sequence with no padding, our model will perform exactly the same. And that's what we want. I've already trained this model as well. You can see we actually get a slightly higher accuracy as well. And if we were to run this model again with the full batch, you can see we get 82.85, slightly higher. And if we now were to switch to a single element in our batch, you can see we get the exact same accuracy. That's what we want. So now that we've had a look at this simple example, let's scale it up and see how we properly construct a transformer model. So the type of architecture or the type of transformer we've been looking at is known as an encoder-only architecture. That is a model with only an encoder. Over the next few videos, we'll look at encoder-decoder models and a decoder-only model. But a transformer encoder basically can take an input sequence and produces an output that combines the entire input. But typically what we do is we have multiple stages of attention, MLP, attention, MLP. So in our example, we just had a single block of that, but typically we have many of them. 
we can see our encoder only architecture here. We have our input embeddings, the positional embedding that we saw, then our attention, feed forward, and we do that n times. So we have multiple of these blocks. So let's have a look at how we've done that. All the rest of this is the same. We've only changed our network architecture. Here I've defined an end module class called transformer block. And this basically does what our nano transformer does. There's a single block of our overall transformer architecture. So you can see we have our multi-headed attention and our MLP feed forward block. We also typically have normalization or layer normalization, and this will just normalize each embedding in our sequence to be the same mean and standard deviation so that no embedding is larger or smaller than any of the others. So they don't dominate in the multi-headed attention stage. So you can see here, we take our input for this block. We normalize it, pass it through our multi-headed attention, as well as that key padding mask we talked about before, take our output. And what we also typically do is have a residual skip connection over both our attention and our MLP, again, to facilitate gradients flowing backwards during back propagation and during forward propagation, making sure information can get deeper into our network. So we can stack many, many of these blocks. So a residual connection over our attention, norm, again, into our MLP, we get our MLP output, again, residual connection, then our output. So this is our base block for our transformer and our transformer classifier, our encoder only transformer consists of many of these transformer blocks. In this block, we have our token embeddings as well as our positional embeddings. And here I just construct a module list of however many transformer blocks we want. And then we have our FC output as well. Instead of using say the start of sentence token or our sequence, what we usually do with text classification or classification with a transformer is include another embedding in our sequence. So it is going to be a constant embedding in the sequence, like the start of sentence token, but it's not going to be any input token. It's going to be another part of our model. So we're not going to expect that there's going to be a start of sentence token. We're going to include in the actual architecture an additional embedding that we're going to add to the start of our sequence separate to any of the input tokens. So what we need to do is we take our input sequence. We have that key padding mask as well, and we have our input embedding, and we're going to concatenate on that fixed input embedding to the other embeddings in our sequence to produce the full sequence of embeddings. And you can see, I also concatenate on an additional uh, element in the sequence for the key padding mask. So zeros to a bool will give false so that that input, that classification token in our sequence can be queried itself. And the rest is the same. We add on our positional embeddings and we pass that into our transformer blocks and that will do our attention and our MLP. And then the output will be fed into the next block in the sequence and we do that until we've gone through all our blocks. And then we pass that into our FC, but here we're actually going to be taking out the very first element in our sequence, which is going to be that fixed vector that we added at the start. We're gonna pull that out and only pass that through our final linear layer to get our output classification. So let's have a look at our training now. The instantiation is pretty similar, but now we're gonna define the number of layers and also the number of heads per multi-headed attention block. In our training loop, it's pretty much exactly the same, except now we're not indexing the first element of our sequence that's already been done in our model. Uh, so we can calculate the cross entropy loss directly when we do our testing. So we can train that as well. You can see we get a slightly better accuracy. This AG news data set is fairly easy to learn up to about a 92% accuracy. After that, some of the sequences just become a bit unclassifiable, a bit random, but maybe you could get a better performance by adding more blocks and more layers on. That's all I wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully you found that useful. As I said, in the next few videos, we're going to cover other types of transformer architectures and see how they're useful. So if you haven't already, remember to subscribe and stay tuned for those next ones. Thank you.